Good morning, everyone. I'm Annabelle Bond, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my journey to the mountains. 250 daring men and women are climbing toward the summit of Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth. Some will succeed, most will fail, seven will die. This is my big inspiration. This is my grandmother. In 1929, she was one of the first Western women in Nepal. In my mind, she is one of the pioneers of adventure travel. I grew up here in Hong Kong, commuting to boarding school in the UK when I was eight years old. My career took me back to Hong Kong, where I worked in real estate for FPD Savills for 10 years. It was during this time that I became involved in competitive long distance running competing four years in a row in a 103-kilometer mountain marathon known as the Trail Walker, a very understated name for such a grueling race. I believe that it was this race and its training that enabled me to climb mountains for two reasons. One, I became very in tune with my body and my physical limits. And two, I knew I had the stamina and endurance required for a summit day. I gave up my career in real estate, and I decided I was far more suited to a career in adventure travel. I spent plenty of time doing the research. I climbed a mountain in Bolivia, I rode horses across Ecuador, I ran the Inca Trail, and I learned to play polo rather badly down in Argentina. It was about mid-2003 when one of those life-changing opportunities came my way. It began with my mother meeting a Chilean banker at a party, and by the time she'd finished telling him what an amazing climber I was, I had at that point climbed one mountain, he had uh, invited me to join the Chilean 204 Everest expedition. Now, what obviously started as a joke, I took seriously, and I got on a plane, and I flew to Ecuador, and I met the Chilean team to climb two 20,000-foot peaks in a week. Despite the numerous attempts to ditch the gringa, um, we had two successful ascents down in Ecuador, which led to a much more formal invitation for me to join the Chilean 204 Everest expedition. I then went and lived down in Chile for three months and climbed another five peaks above 20,000 feet. So that by the time I left for Everest, I'd climbed eight peaks above 20,000 feet. The seven summits, for those of you who might not be aware, are the highest peaks on each continent located on some of the most remote corners of the Earth. The order in which I climb them, Everest, needs no introduction, the tallest mountain in the world and claims the lives of 10% of those that climb it. This particular picture was taken of my team coming up through the Kumbu Icefall. I don't know where that's at. Um, one of the more treacherous areas of the mountain and where more than half the total fatalities have taken place. Sorry, I don't know why that didn't come up. There it is. Elbrus in Russia, the tallest mountain for Europe, and at 18 and a half thousand feet, um, is, um, that's what its height is, sorry. Um, I don't know what was more difficult, the climb itself or just getting there. Kilimanjaro in Africa, an extinct volcano that rises majestically out of the game plains of Kenya and Tanzania. We went through some very diverse scenery from dense tropical jungle to arid moorland to a melting glacier near its summit. In Australia, the easiest of the seven summits by far, um, and of an altitude less than Aspen, Colorado. The girls spice things up by scaling the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Vincent Massif in Antarctica, uh, most remote of the seven summits and log logistical nightmare to get to. We flew from Punta Arenas, the southernmost tip of Chile, five hours south, landing on the ice at Patriot Hills. We then took another plane an hour across the ice cap, landing at the base of Vincent Massif. Um, that was uh, the plane that we landed on the ice, um, and uh, it was the size of a 747, so I was kind of surprised the ice didn't break, uh, and me digging the boys' camp as usual. <laughs> Um, Aconcagua in Argentina, known for its high winds and violent storms. This mountain tested my physical limits to the max and sent me straight to hospital for frostbite. That's the summit day. Denali in Alaska, the most remote of the, the most, um, one of the, some say the coldest of the seven summits and just located just a few miles from the Arctic Circle. 
Um, we went through some very extreme weather, from extreme heat to extreme cold, and I came away from this mountain learning a very important lesson. When I came out of Everest, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I'd lived on this bed of rocks at 17 and a half thousand feet for two, for two months, and I'd lived and breathed Everest for seven months prior to that. So when I'd achieved this amazing thing that no one, I mean no one, thought I could do, I was lost. I was suffering from what's known as post-Everest depression, the removal of a big goal in your life. I'm a very goal-oriented person, so I found my next goal directly after the climb whilst down in Thailand. I happened to be on the internet, and I saw no woman had climbed the seven summits in under a year. I knew that this is what I wanted to do next, and I set my heart on doing it. By the time I'd made this decision and I got back to London, it was late June, and because of the different hemispheres, I knew that I had to start climbing again by August. So that left me six weeks to raise the money. Sponsorship was a nightmare. I contacted every conceivable company that I thought wanted to sponsor a girl who wanted to break a record in mountaineering. Banks, insurance companies, um, you name it, airlines, cosmetic companies. I got rejection after rejection. So desperate, I got on a plane and I went to New York. And here, two amazing companies gave me some funding. And this was followed closely by Lee and Fung, who also came in. So I had sufficient funding to get me through Antarctica, but not enough to finish. Feeling utterly frazzled, I got on a plane and I headed straight out to climb Denali and um, climb uh, Elbrus in Russia. Um, Russia, Kilimanjaro, and Kosciuszko were very straightforward climbs. Um, I then had agreed to climb Vincent in Antarctica and to reclimb Aconcagua back to back. Vincent was a huge stress for me because it cost me more than half my total sponsorship money. Um, so I was under a huge amount of pressure to get to the summit. Despite a few weather delays, we got lucky down in Vincent. And with one day's rest, I went straight to reclimb Aconcagua. Now, I guess I probably went to Aconcagua feeling a little confident because I'd climbed it before. One word of advice. Never, ever go to a mountain feeling confident. The mountain has amazing ways of humbling you, as I was to find out. My plan was that we would ride in by mule, that's two nine-hour days in the saddle, which uh, my male guides were really unhappy about. Um, we were going to go base camp, camp one, camp two, summit out. That was the plan. Nothing went according to plan. We had mule dramas. Um, at camp one, my cameraman came down with altitude sickness. Camp two, my other guide had to go home for Christmas. So that left me and Ang Dorji Sherpa to go for the summit. Now, doctors say it takes the human body six months to recover from an Everest climb. So six months later, I was on my sixth mountain on my six different, con six different continent, and I was tired. And by the time I got to the summit of Aconcagua, I just collapsed. I had made the fatal mistake that you should never make in mountaineering. I had misjudged my physical limits. My lips were blue, I was from lack of oxygen, and I lay in a crumpled heap and I could not move. And Dorji could not carry me down because he was smaller than me, and he was also tired. So if I wanted to live, I had to get down that mountain myself. So I lay there for what seemed like eternity. I managed to get down three goo shots, which those of you that run trail walker know is a rather gross carbohydrate gel. And by some miracle, I dug really deep and I was able to move down the mountain under my own power. I came away with my life. I was one of the lucky ones, although I went straight to hospital to deal with the frostbite in my hands and feet. I then had to wait four more months for the earliest, safest, conceivable time that I could climb Denali, um, giving my frostbite. When I got to the summit of Denali, I just couldn't believe that the goal I'd set myself 360 days earlier had actually happened. All the blood, sweat, and tears, all that effort was all condensed into one single moment. Um, I was so happy. My happiness was short-lived. The next morning, I woke up from the high camp to find the bodies of two neighboring climbers lying dead next to my tent. I will never forget that image. And you know, I came out of Denali thinking, it's not rather like life, it's not about the, the getting to the summit, it's about the journey and the experience and the lessons that you learn. And the summit is just a bonus. In case you underestimate the logistics of an Everest expedition, 
This is me in front of our gear for base camp. We had four tons of gear, and three tons is not my makeup, like people like to joke. <laughs> uh, we didn't shower for seven weeks on Everest, so just to show you our glamorous home, uh, this is my once a fortnight hair washing session. Now, I had to battle with my inner demons every single day on Everest to overcome my fear of heights. So I just want to show you one of the ladder crossings, and this is a shorter one, that I think shows uh, my struggle. And you cannot see the bottom of what's between the crevasse. Mount Everest has killed many climbers who are stronger and more experienced than Annabelle. And she knows it. It's like she's trying to run before she can even walk. You can sense my fear. <laughs> um, people often ask me, what is it that drives you? What is it that makes you put your life in that type of danger? And you know, there's lots of things that drive you at different times on the mountain. I wanted to make my parents proud of me. I wanted to prove to everyone that I could do it, even though they said I couldn't. But you know, upon reflection, there is actually only one answer. And that is, you earn your self-respect. By pushing yourself to that kind of extreme, you learn how to respect yourself. And that gives you an inner confidence that enables you to deal with a lot of life's obstacles to get thrown your way. Things in life seem rather small when compared to the mountains. My Everest Summit Day is still, it can still make me cry to this day. All the emotion, all that effort, I remember it so vividly. So I just want to show you some of the emotional kind of highlights from my Everest climb. To tell myself a lot that I can do this, that other people have done it, and I've definitely got the strength and the ability to do it. Headed toward Camp 3, every climber on Mount Everest comes face to face with the cold, hard reality of death. Annabelle Bond pays respect to the mountain and the fallen. Um, I've just seen my first dead body, and I'm not really enjoying that experience, as a matter of fact. I'm finding it really off putting. And Camp 3. Couldn't come soon enough in my eyes. I guess I'll keep going. I'm tired. On the icefall's final ladder, Annabelle is clipped in with two safety lines. Still, it doesn't exactly feel safe. It's hard to enjoy yourself in this environment, even when you should feel thrilled. Annabelle's team is in first place, and she is in position to be the first woman to summit this year. But is she happy? Just torture. And it's just pounding in there. It's freezing. I want to get some sleep before we leave at 10 o'clock tonight to try and summit. We're actually waking up at 8. You can see the lack of oxygen in the air. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and I'm scared about what tomorrow entails. Annabelle is dying right now. Everyone at this altitude is. As a murderous wind rips through the Buddhist prayer flags at Camp 4, Annabelle sits in her tent, defying the skeptics. So here we are, the eve for one of the biggest days of my life. Um, yeah, I'm a little teary. I'm nervous. Um, I really want to do it. Um, I know it's going to be hell. It's going to be pushing through a pain barrier, which I don't think I've ever done before. And wish me luck. That's all I have to say. I wish all of our team luck. My year of climbing was an unbelievably challenging year. I climbed 150,000 feet of vertical. That's into the stratosphere. I spent five months in a tent. It was a logistical nightmare, and I endured extreme heat and extreme cold, and I had the misfortune to see two people die on Denali but I remained committed to my goal. With determination, focus, perseverance, a ton of luck, and the love and support of my family, I was able to achieve the unimaginable. There is nothing unimaginable about all of us here, setting our goals high and challenging all our energies into achieving it. So if the girl that's terrified of heights can climb the tallest mountain in the world, just think of what every single one of you can do if you put your mind to it. Here is my summit day footage. 
I knew I had one shot. Ultimately, it's your legs that have got to get you up there. It's legs and lungs. That's the two things that take you to the summit. Annabelle Bond has made it to the Hillary step. Here, she must play Russian roulette with the safety lines. If she picks the wrong one, she could die. I can't actually believe that I'm here and I'm just trying not to get too nervous. Annabelle is higher than any other mountaintop in the world. To her right, she has an awesome overview of the Himalayas. Straight above her, she has just 60 vertical meters to go until the summit. To her left is a deadly drop-off that plummets for more than a kilometer. With their teammates proudly waiting for them, Annabelle and Andronica take their last few steps to glory. It's been the most bonding thing with the team. I think that's to go through an experience like this together. We've all cried, we've all, you know, laughed. Just being on the top there is something I'll never, ever forget. It's the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. Annabelle is ecstatic, but she's on the most inhospitable piece of land on Earth. Getting up Mount Everest is just half the battle. She still has to get back down, alive. I think most people are in shock that I've made it. I don't think people can believe <laughs> that I've actually done it, which is a nice thing. It's, it's good to surprise people rather than to have them expect you to do it. Chilean's got a bit overexcited. Um, <laughs> so people often ask me, what's next? It's like, um, well, apart from the occasional 250 kilometer desert race, Isabella Bond, my daughter, um, she's my next goal and where I spend all my energy. Um, I want her to be proud of what I've done. I want her to live her life, taking every single opportunity that comes her way and to live life to the full. When I'm gone from this planet, no one will remember me for me. People will remember me through my daughter and the lessons that I've taught her. Thank you.